Today I'm going to show you what's inside of this automatic transmission shifter and how it works. I've removed this shifter assembly from a Volkswagen Jetta with a dual clutch automatic transmission. The entire base here is made of plastic and actually bolts up from underneath the vehicle as opposed to in the console. Now, the shifter has a few main functions, the first of which is to control the movement of this cable relative to the transmission so I know what gear to put it in. And of course this also has a bunch of interlock functions to make sure you're not in the wrong gear at the wrong time. As you'll see this is a pretty complicated system that all has to work mechanically. It's not your typical EV digital shifter. All right, taking a look at the front here, you can see this here is your park lockout solenoid, and it's got this little pin here which is going to relax in order to get you out of park mode. You'll see here it's completely locked as I push it in manually. That's how you're going to unlock yourself from park. Now this entire shifter assembly here along with the rod is what's going to move back and forth as you're shifting your gears from park to reverse neutral and drive. Now once you move over into manual mode here, you see that this entire mechanism here shifts over to the one side, and then you can move it back and forth to control the gears electronically. And on the back side here, you can see the detents which gives you that nice firm click so you know that you're in manual mode. I'm going to try to get this boot out of the way so I can see a little better. I'm going to just break this plastic piece off here. All right, I've released these clips here. Now I can get the shifter head to pop off. Now this button here, which used to be spring-loaded, when you press it, it actually pulls this guy up. And that's what allows you to shift the interlock for this thing. Looks like there's four small Torx bolts. I'm going to take those off. Pop this cover off. There's a couple of tens under here. It'll tight because of the cable there. I'm gonna remove these torques in here. Slack here. I'm just gonna release this plastic here. Give me more room here to work with. All right, so if you look inside of this mechanism here, you can see there's actually a ball and socket kind of attachment here. This cable's getting a little annoying, so I'm gonna go ahead and chop it off right here. Now, while you might think the shifter assembly just pushes and pulls the cable, there's an entire microprocessor inside of here that has to work with the logic in order to tell the computer what to do. You can see these two white gears on the outside here form the pivot axis for you move from drive to the manual mode. Now, once you are in the manual mode, you'll see that this piece and this piece over here are what's gonna move back and forth along with the shifter as you shift your gears plus and minus you'll see that that has no relationship to the position of the shifter rod now you'll see there's another axis which is by this pivot point here and over here which is the normal one that's going to rotate this entire assembly back and forth into your park reverse neutral and drive see with manual mode it's these forks here that move back and forth however with the entire park reverse neutral drive it's this entire thing that moves back and forth and therefore the shifter rod is going to be moving so the shifter rod only controls the direction but your actual gears because this is a DSG is only controlled by these guys here electronically. Now a DSG is basically an automatically electronically shifted manual transmission that's why you can't afford to do this electronically. Now because you're using the same shifter handle to move back and forth through your manual gear selection there's this little black arm over here that's going to re-engage this piece to the black plastic piece so that you can move the rod back and forth when you want to switch directions. So you can see as I move this from drive to manual mode here this little black arm here re-engages. There's also one over here on the other side that's doing the opposite thing and then once it re-engages you're allowed to move the whole thing as one assembly. I'm going to further disassemble this here by taking out this little holder here. That's what's holding the pivot there. Now we've got this pivot here for that black arm. I need to remove that pin, plug, just like that. And one more on this side. That's the plug for the lockout. Okay, after some wiggling, I can get this part out. I just have to get this plug here, which connects it to the rest of the computer. Now we can pop that out of the housing and take a closer look at this part. All right, taking a look at this assembly, removed from the housing, you can see these here were the two pivot points for this thing to move back into manual mode. And these here were the two black arms that move out of the way when you are in manual mode here. And that will allow this steel fork here, which is attached to the shifter, to independently move back and forth so that you can change your gears plus and minus. But then they'll move back into place over here. And then it becomes one piece with this black plastic. And that's gonna allow you to shift from park reverse neutral and drive. This here is that solenoid for the park lockout. You can see as I move it out of the way, it's just a spring-loaded piece that's going to suck in once energy is applied to it over here. And that only sucks in when conditions are met, such as the vehicle is started, the ignition key is on, the brakes are pressed, and of course you have to depress the shifter lever. Only then will this suck in and you'll be allowed to move the shifter out of park. Pop off these little pivot pieces here, as well as the black plastic arm on either side. Now this white part here presses up against the circuit board and that's how electronically the car is going to know what gear you're in depending on where the shifter is located. Now the circuit board has four pieces where it's plastic welded on so we're going to go ahead and unweld that. There we go. And you can see this here is the sense area. And this little arm here looks like it's got a little magnet in there. 
This little park solenoid is getting a little annoying, so I'm going to see if I can chop off these two rivets here where it's attached to. You can tell these are not very serviceable items. I'll pop off that solenoid. Now for the shift lockout function using this button on the shifter, it's all controlled inside of here. So as you push that button, this rod pushes up and that's going to push this U-shaped piece up and allow you to move between gears. So for example, I'm in neutral right now. I can shift to drive or back to neutral, but nothing more. Only until I pull that up, then I'm allowed to shift to S mode over here. Now if I want to go from S mode, I could just pull it out. That takes me to drive, then back to neutral. But I can't go to reverse unless if I pull this thing back up and bam, now I'm in reverse. Now I can't go into park once again unless if I push this thing back up, now I'm back into park. So basically this teeth profile here is what determines when I need to press that button on the shifter to pull this up. Or if I don't need to press it as I can shift between neutral and drive. Now pressing this button is not only a cognitive function that makes you think that you want to shift, but it also prevents like your purse that's hanging off here from accidentally shifting for you while you're driving. Now inside this white piece here is what's responsible for giving you that satisfying click when you shift your shifter, it's going to remove these screws here. Ooh, hear that hissing sound? That's something hot touching snow. Get it open. So how this works is inside of the bottom here you have this spring and that's going to be pressing up against this little roller over here. Now this roller is what's going to glide on this little surface over here which has the individual detents for your park, reverse, neutral and drive. Now it looks like this pin is tack welded on so I'm going to see if I can grind this off. Pop this pin out. So that there was just for that pivot point but there's another pivot point up here that I got to relax. Now this piece in the middle here is the end of the shifter rod. Now it's good that this is a rod because a cable will stretch or snap or rust after a while but it also means this entire thing gets to be replaced as an assembly from underneath the vehicle including the shifter mechanism and the shifter linkage if something does happen. So here's we can kind of see that dual pivot axis if you lock this to this it all becomes one piece whereas if you unlock it then you could just move the rod itself alone and that's what allows you to change the manual shift. The inside of this arm here you can see there's this white piece which is the slides for it. Let's see if I could push that out of there. Here's the little slider for the pin in the middle. There's also one on this side if I can get that out. There we go. Now for the manual shift you can see there's these two springs here that are going to move back and forth and that's what's going to give you that springiness to bring it back to center when you're manually shifting. So this is the key piece here. At the bottom here we had that spring with the detents that's going to give you the nice clicky piece. Then in the middle here is where you had the springs for your manual shift. Then at the top here is the park reverse neutral drive locker. You can see this here is the key to the mechanism where you have the little fork inside of there that moves. Park is going to be completely locked out. Then you got to press the button to go to reverse. Then from reverse you can just drop it down to neutral and then drive. But you can't go backwards because in order to go uphill you got to press the button again and then press the button to go back into drive. Same thing when you're going into S mode you're going to have to press the button once again. This is the last piece over here that has the pivots for the manual shift as well as that selector fork that moves in and out. Now while most of this stuff I've taken apart is all mechanical electronics is a key role here because it has to know which position it's in park reverse neutral or drive or also which position if you're shifting up or down shifting and then send that information over through the CAN bus to the ECU so it knows how to control the DSG. Now it's also got to take information from the brake switch and ignition switch to control this little solenoid over here to unlock the shifter and of course it's got to send energy out to the lights here on the dashboard so you know which gear you're in. And there's a look at how the shifter works in your car so the next time you start your car and drive it away think of all of these components that are behind this button and shifter to make it work. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos in the freezing cold just like this one.